Amen. Please let's read one scripture before we sit down in the book of chapter verse. Let us read together. One, two, three. For I resolved to know nothing while I was with you except Jesus Christ and Him crucified for the last time. For I resolved to know nothing while I was with you except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Lift your Bible, say, Lord, this is your word that has power to change my life. Oh Lord, today. Speak to me. Let your word come in my life. Let your word transform me, change me, restore me, heal me, correct me, protect me. Let your word bring light in my life and in my family. In Jesus' name, amen. Please have your seat. Thank you, praise team. Thank you, church. We thank God once again for this morning. I'm so excited for the privilege to be in God's presence. I don't know about you. David says, I was glad when I hear the news that we are going to the house of God. He says, I was so glad. So when you come to the day of meeting, you must be glad. Tell your neighbor, you must be glad. Because meeting is a privilege, it's not a right. Hallelujah. You know, at the time we, we, we boast with the life that we have as if we have power to control what happened to us. We don't have. I was telling somebody that, you know, human life, at this time, we look like we are strong the way we look, but we are very fragile because anything can collapse at any time, at any time. That's why the time that God gives to you, you must use that time wisely, wisely, wisely. Hallelujah. You must use it wisely. So anything can happen to you anytime. You know the prediction is just the reality of life, how it is. Time to visit a brother yesterday, and he, you know he, he had to go through a surgery, and he traveled for for work purposes. As he get the complication, his health and straight far away from home, they say we have to operate you now. That's how life is. Now. I have to rush him back to job back and he went through operation. Like a joke. So anything will happen anytime. That's why I need to appreciate life and use life wisely for God. Very sad news I got uh, during the week or last week, I think last week maybe, maybe some of you will see that news on the TV and and this, I know this is a terrible accident that happened. For the sake of those who didn't listen to news, because you are so much in the spiritual thing, some of us we go to listen to the news because you cannot be spiritual without news. Uh, you need to hear the news for you to know how to position yourself spiritually. To a terrible accident that happened. Who heard about the accident that happened? About the back in the school, children and the fire catch the whole bus. But to break my heart is four children for somebody they died in one day. Four. You pack a lunchbox for your children. And that was the end. Four. Ask God, what did they do? Bad that we don't do. Four. Very small. I think they are, they are less than 15 years. All of them. Four in one day. Not like they die, you can see. 
They were burnt. For Jesus. On the same road, we, you and me, we are on the same road every day. We go up, we come down, we say, I'll see you tomorrow, as if you are now. You come tomorrow. Somebody say grace and mercy. And that is the end of story. Maybe that, I don't know, maybe that the only children you had in your life born. And that age, very innocent. They don't know corruption like some of us. They don't know evil like we do. But we still, we still surviving in our evil doing. Someone asked me, why God allowed you? I said, you see, God certain questions that are not answered. I cannot answer. I don't know. Especially coming to death, God does not just answer easily. But one day, you know why God permits certain things. Because whatever God does, it is good. He says, our God is in heaven and he does whatever pleases him. If it pleases him to call somebody, can take anyone. I'll continue. Exodus chapter 9, verse 13. Can you give King James version or New King James, whoever is closer? Exodus chapter 9. Last Sunday, I started some teaching with us. The Bible said, then, the Lord said to Moses, let me read here. Then the Lord said to Moses, Rise early in the morning and stand before Pharaoh and say to him, Thus says the Lord God of the Hebrews, Let my people go that they may serve me. And now go to the same but other version. New Living Translation, it read, Then the Lord said to Moses, Get up early in the morning and stand before Pharaoh. Tell him, This is what the Lord, the God of the Hebrews, says. Let my people go so they can worship me. Hallelujah. So the whole concept of deliverance of the people of Israel, the whole purpose of God behind striking the, the, the Egyptian, performing all miracles, the whole purpose of God is to have worshippers. And a worshipper is a servant. You cannot split worship and serving. So putting in the same perspective, the purpose of God of saving you, saving me, is for you and me, we should become the worshipers. And when we become the worshipers, it means that we are at the service of the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm continuing the second part of our message of last week, which I've entitled Steps to what? The breakthrough. Step toward the breakthrough. Why God had to help you and me to break through situations, to break through challenges. You find yourself sick. You break through, you are healed. 
What is the purpose of God behind your healing? We look for money. The breakthrough comes. God gives you an opportunity, whether in business, whether it is an employment. Then you start working. It's a financial breakthrough, as we call it. What is the purpose of God to break through a situation of our life? Does God have the limitation in performing all that we need in life? Not at all. Nothing is too hard for him. Jeremiah 32, verse 26 and 27, it says, Then the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah and says, I am the Lord of all flesh, the God of all universe, the God of all creations. Is there anything too hard for me to do? This is God telling Jeremiah. God is able, as we say, even to call into existence things which are not as if they were. It means without any effort. Is God unable to bless us with finances, with money, with cars, with houses? Not at all. Those things are easy. God can just say one, they appear. We cannot limit the abilities of God in what God does. But the ability of God that are embedded in who he is. I don't think you hear what I'm saying. So there's nothing that God has to do for him to be the God who he is. He's God by himself. That's why he said, even your worship does not make me a God. If you don't want to worship me, I will order even the stones they will come at my service. This is to tell you and me that we have been privileged to be so much loved by God. The Bible says, not even to say who is a man, what is a man? That's what the Bible says, what is a man that you, God, you are so mindful of him, what is a man? To the extent you have made him just a little lower than Elohim, it means a little lower than yourself, and you have crowned him for the battle he never fought. And he put everything under his feet. Under his authority. What is a man? Yet his life is like a smoke that rises from a boiling pot. For a second they disappear. Vanish. But God's mind is full of a man. A man who rebels against him. A man who does not love him. God is thinking about a man. Hallelujah. See, in the Garden of Eden, I like saying this. Because some people, we think, the religion have deceived us that we need to go to God when we have need, when we have problem. In the beginning, it was not so. Tell your neighbor, in the beginning, it was not so. See, these are the wrong and fake gospel we are receiving. You tell me, Adam never applied for a job. He got employed. No interview. The man never, uh, never sleep hungry. But he needed God. <laughs> Hallelujah. The man, he was not buying food. But he still needed God fellowship. And Papa Kumaru. So, in other way, what do I mean? I mean that Adam could go to church not because he had no job. He got to ask for a job. Not because he had no money. He went to ask for money. Not because he was sick. Have you heard that Adam had been sick? Hello? No, he had never been sick. So, all these things which for which we are running today, whether they are good or bad, in the beginning, it was not so. 
In the beginning, it was a relationship. That's what the Bible says, at the cooler of the day, God will come, they sit. I don't know your Bible. I never read, Found Adam say, God, you see now, the mosquitoes are biting me too much. No. There were no issue. There were no complaint. Today, we are the complaining believers. God, if you don't do, I die. I quit the church. They know enough anointing. My problem, they no one to go. You see, the issue is we don't know God. We have no relationship with him. What motivates us is what we can get from him. And let me tell you, what motivates God to do anything in your life is your worship. And the Bible says it was because of the worship, the service that God needed from his people. That's why he came. He said to Moses, tell Pharaoh, the reason why I stood up, I God, to do anything possible to get my people out is for one reason, to worship me. But you know, when the same people, they left, they forget the purpose for which God has done every kind of miracle. When they get in the wilderness, they forget God. They say, this Moses, this is a scammer. He took us here for us to die. They say, Aaron, see the jewelry that the Egyptian gave to us, for which they never worked for. They take the blessing of God of material. They gave to Aaron. This guy, I don't know where he got his qualification. He made them a calf. He said, this is your God of gold that took you out of Egypt. They began to worship the things that God gave to them because they changed the thing to become their God. The image of the church today. After we pray, we cry, God has blessed us. We take the blessing of God. We metamorphose it. It becomes our image of calf. We cannot give God the worship he deserves. Now we look to our image. My job, I don't want to lose it. But we, had it, no, we did not have it before. Thank you for your silence. My car. Some people even call their car my baby. The way they take their car to their to the how call it to the car wash. If that's the same way they can take their heart for cleansing every week. Call your heart my baby. You need a shower. My baby, you need to be clean. These are the things that are pinning the Holy Ghost. We have become idolaters. Idol worshippers. Where do I get the idol? You got the idol from the things God gave to you. He gave them favor to go to the Egyptian. Egyptian look at them. Remember, these guys, they were slaves. Can a slave buy gold? No. But God favored them. The Egyptians, they took all their things they gave to them, even their gold. They took the blessing of God. They went to Aaron. Make us a God now. From the blessing that we receive from God. And Aaron gave them a God. Can a man give you a God? Today we go after men to give us God. The performing miracle for you is your God now. Yet the one who did everything over 2,000 years ago upon the cross for one purpose for you to save him. See how we are, how we are, we are robbing God. We enter an agreement, God save me, I will save you. Save me, I will save you. Save me, I will save you. After he saved us, bye-bye. The Bible says you cannot make fool out of God. 
Hallelujah. You cannot rob God. Go and tell him, let my people go for one reason. They must save me. This guy is in the garden. Beautiful, beautiful place. Hallelujah. God, you know, oh, what I love is, see, Adam never saw how the tree were growing. Do you know that? God finished the garden and planted him there. And God said, you see, all these trees got fruit. You can eat all of them. Guy, oh God. So in the garden, there were no season of fruit disappearing. Fruit were there. Penniless type of life, which we are looking for. Every day in the mountain. God, give me, give me, give me. This guy never prayed for it. I don't say we should not pray. But it's the sin that entered complicated all the matter. But that should not be an excuse that we should run after the things. We should run after God. Who makes God your God? Hallelujah. In our main text we've been reading last week. You know that book? You remember the book? Oh, God have mercy. You don't remember the book? I say this job. Job has 40 Two chapters, and I gave you homework to read. I hope you read. I say I will touch mostly chapter one, then chapter forty-two. In between, you are in charge. Don't run. Don't run to finish. Don't don't, don't read to finish. Read to understand. Because finishing won't help you. You forget everything next day. Now the book of Job. Oh, this man, life is an inspiration. Hallelujah. Job chapter 1, from verse 1. It says, There once was a man named Job who lived in the land of Uz. He was blameless. A man of complete integrity, not half. Complete integrity. He feared God. Fear God also means what? He loved God so much. That he had no room for an excuse. He feared God and stayed away from evil. He had seven sons and three daughters. Ten children. He owned seven thousand sheep three thousand camels five hundred teams of oxen five hundred female donkeys he also had many servants he was in fact the richest person in the entire area richest person i told you last week that donkeys of those days donkeys stand for transporting people or Good. So donkeys is considered as a vehicle. This man had 500 cars. 500. Some of us go to one car and say, hey, I've arrived. 500. Cars. I said last week, more than Tarja. Tarja weekend, they run short of cars. But Job had enough. You call for taxi, he send you one. Don't preach that. And he had many servants. He was the richest man in the area. <laughs> Job's son, listen. Job's son will take turns preparing feasts in their home. It means to have a celebrity party is nothing. They have enough in their homes. And will also invite their three sisters to celebrate with them. What were they celebrating? Just want to celebrate. Now he says, when this celebration ended, sometimes after several days, Job would purify his children. He would get up early in the morning and offer a burnt offering for each of them. For Job said to himself, perhaps my children have sinned and have cursed God in their heart. This was Job's regular practices. 
regular practice. So Job, every time he will go to God, offer sacrifice. That means what? He was praying for his children. A rich man in the area praying. Now you tell me why we can't pray. Tell me, neighbor, did you hear that? <laughs> a rich man in the whole from the bill park is praying. For example, rich. Job was so rich. But the Bible said this rich man was praying and was fearing God. When we become so rich, we stop fearing God. It means we stop loving God. We stop serving God. We stop worshiping God. But this man was the rich man in the area. Yet fears God. Yet he was praying. This is Job. So he was not just praying because he has material. He understood the place of God in his life. And this is step number one toward your breakthrough. Do we understand that we need God? Not because we have challenges. Hallelujah. He fears God. And every time Job will go and spend time with God, talk to God, my sons may, uh, may, may, may have offended you, my children. He offers sacrifice. He says for prayer. My brother, my sister, we don't pray. We should not be praying because we lack. Did you hear that? If that's the reason why you say today you are, you, are, you, are, you are motivated because your prayers of yesterday it was based upon asking you to go to what you wanted. Now in the church everything is fine. Next step, you ask God for something God take a time. You forgot that the same God who gave you yesterday the same God able to give you again. Then now, my sister, my brother, how is it? Ah, uh, 50-50? Why? Because we don't understand God. We don't know him. And this man, and this is what touches me quite often, a rich man in the area is praying. Tell your neighbor, the rich man is praying. This is serious. Hey. Verse number six. One day the members of the heavenly court came to present themselves before the Lord. The accuser Satan came with them. Where have you come from? The Lord asked Satan. Satan answered the Lord. I have been, pat <laughs> I've been patrolling the earth, watching everything that's going on. My brother, you can be, pat you can be being patrolled, you don't know. He said, I've been patrolling the earth, looking, checking how things are happening. Who are you? Satan telling God, you know, the only place the devil does not lie before God. They can only speak the truth. He said, exactly where you're coming from. I'm from the earth. I was patrolling to see how people are going. And God said, did you notice? Did you notice my servant? And the Lord says, Satan, have you noticed my servant's job? He's the finest man in all the earth. Can God bet for you or for me like that before the devil? Whatever my son asks. He's the finest man. He is blameless. A man of complete integrity. Not the man who says yes today, tomorrow say no. Complete integrity. He fears God and he stays away from evil. Satan says, hey, wait a minute, God. Satan replied to the Lord, yes, but Job has God has good reason to fear God. You have always put a wall of protection around him and his home and his property. You have made him prosper in everything he does. Look how rich he is. You know, the man was rich. Even the devil acknowledged that the man is rich. Tell your neighbor, God can make you rich. That's not a problem. The neighbor, God to make you rich is not a problem. He does not even need your prayer for him to make you rich. No. The problem of God is he wants to find a worshiper in your riches. Can I hear an amen? 
God wants to find a worshiper in your rich. The problem is that when we remove worship, we remove service, want to be rich, God find rich for what? A rich man was still a worshiper. The Lord says, but reach out and take away everything he has and it will surely, no, the devil says, but reach out and take away everything he has and it will surely kiss you to your face. All right, you may test him. The Lord said to Satan, do whatever you want with everything he possesses, but don't harm him physically. So Satan left the Lord's presence. Other way, don't touch his soul. See, last week we read the story happened. Please go and read that home due to time. The Bible says anything begin to happen in the life of Job. One messenger comes after another messenger. It was not for a week in the same day. This one came. He says, as I have come, I have escaped. This is a special message. They can only escape. While I was still, see verse 18, while he was still speaking, another messenger arrived in this news. Your sons and daughters were feasting in their oldest brother's home. Suddenly, a powerful wind swept in from the wilderness and hit the house on all sides. The house collapsed and all your children are dead. I'm the only one who escaped to tell you. And this story continues. He lost all the donkey 500. All your car broke down. Will you still go to church? Ask your neighbor. <sighs> Easy to say. Your house catch fire. Everything collapsed. And job wife, since she was after material, I say, guess God. Why should I start walking now? I have 500 donkeys. No, the job wife, she said to Job, why are you suffering like this? Can you kiss God? You can die quickly. He lost everything. What do you mean everything is everything? Seven children dead. Seven sons dead. Three daughters dead. 500 donkeys gone. 7,000, I think 7,000, uh, 7,000 what again? 7,000 sheep are gone. Oh, 3,000 3, camel gone, 500 oxen gone, 500 female donkeys gone. Imagine, imagine they are female. It means they can produce more. They're gone. I think even in seven they go, they want more job. What are they going to do? Isaiah chapter 9 verse 1. It says this. Give me that one in uh, easy version. Easy version. Isaiah chapter 9 verse 1. We know this scripture. Can we all read together? But can you zoom it a bit? Some people can't see. I want us to read verse 1. Can you see? Can we read loud and clear? 1, 2, 3, let us read. But the darkness will not continue forever. Those who had no hope. God let trouble happen to the land of Zebulun and to the land of Naphtali. But in future years, he will call the people of that region to be great. Hallelujah. I want to tell somebody today, the time of trouble, the time of darkness you are facing, it will not go on forever. Ah, I don't think you hear what I'm saying. I say it will never go on forever. We have a God of restoration. We have a God of increase. The issue is not to get into trouble. The issue is to know how you handle the trouble for you to get to the outside. Hallelujah. The Bible says, the time of trouble, I like other versions say, nevertheless, I think that should be NLT, nevertheless, the time of darkness, 
The time of trouble shall not go on forever. That's New Living Translation. Say, nevertheless, that time of darkness and despair will not go on forever. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, the time of trouble, the time of darkness, the time of despair, it shall not go on forever. It started one day, it will end up one day. The Lord is able to take you out of any trouble and give you breakthrough for one reason, for you to serve him. And he shall do it for his glory. Somebody say amen. amen. This time shall not go on forever. You know, sometimes we panic. Why? Because we are using this watch. This watch is a deceiver. He's a deceiver. Papa Kumalo is dead. The, 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 the Kairos and the, the Kronos. People that are watching the Kronos. Hey, have you heard about the Shinka say? God is able to change your life in a second. God is able to change your history in a second. God is able to change your challenge in a second. I am not talking about the government promises. I'm talking about the living God. The same one you've been dancing here. I serve a living God. Even the devil knows that your God is a living, but you're saving it away. <laughs> yes, I know. We are saving the God of miracles. You don't know the song. I am saving. The way you sing, even the devil is not convinced that you know what you're talking about. Like when the devil look at you, say this one mm -mm, is pushed. Are we saving a God of impossibilities? Are we saving the God that's able to restore all that the enemy has stolen away from you? Are we saving the God who's able to call into existence things which are not as if they were? Saving the God of miracles, I know. Yes, I know. We are saving the God of miracles, I know. Yes, I know. Hallelujah. We are saving. Yes, I know. We are saving the God of miracles. I know, yes, I know, hallelujah. We are saving the God of miracles. I know, yes, I know. We are saving the God of miracles. I know, yes, I know, hallelujah. We are saving the God of miracles. Saving the God of miracles. Sit down. You stand because we're walking to come here. It's about to run. Now we're going to preach with me. Now listen. Now let me finish. The first step that will take you out of whatever you call my problem. You know when you say my problem is too much. Jeremiah said this. He says, why is my wound so incurable? In Jeremiah chapter 15, most of us, we know verse 20, it says, and they will, I'll make you strong like the wall of bronze. I'll start from verse 18, you hear the story there. From verse 18, it says, Jeremiah begins to complain like most of us believers. Why is my problem, why is my wound so incurable, so continual? Oh God, are you a lying source? To the extent you begin to envy other people, even to become hate, you to hate them. You think that they're blocking your breakthrough. While you are failing to understand what is required for you to break through. And the Lord said to Jeremiah, no. I want you to take out the, 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 the evil out of your mouth and begin to speak good things. It's not up to you to go to them. They will come to you. Don't envy them. They will envy you tomorrow. 
God have to do something that even those who thought your God is sleeping, they must be given the test of following your God without you talking to them. Job sit down. The Bible tells me even his friend left him. But listen, I'll give you the steps. Step number one, I mentioned last week. Oh God of heaven. I want to find a verse. The Bible says, verse 20. After they finish all the report they're supposed to give to Job about the challenge, children are dead, your cars are broken, your house is on fire. Your wife has run away. The friend they say, Curse God and die. Everybody walk away from you. I'm talking to somebody. You feel you are left alone. There's a God who have located you. The God that sees you when everybody walked away from you. My Bible tells me, and Job stood up. He took up and tore his robe in grief. And he shaved his head and fell on the ground to do what? Talk to me, church. To do what? To do what? Can you worship after you have lost everything? My Bible tells me in these two situations, Job as a rich man, he remained a worshiper. Job has lost everything, he remained a worshiper. Why our worship as a church is so conditional? Why? When we have abundance, sometimes we forget God. When we have abandoned, sometimes we worship God. When calamity hit us, we abandon God. But this man, the richest man in the area, he ended up becoming the poorest man in the area, yet his worship did not change. Where is the church today? And that's the thing that delaying us in trouble. Because we stop serving God. We stop worshiping God. We focus on the idol. When your idol cannot talk to you anymore, that you are discouraged. Your car cannot drive you anymore. I can't go to church. I have no transport. My brother, you know what you're talking about? Have you met Jesus? Number one step. You don't stop worshipping. Don't stop serving. We don't serve God. Because we have no challenge. Somebody look at me at work. Say, Papa, no. ah, the way you talk, you have no problem. I say, oh, you don't need to know my problem. If I give you my problem, you will understand that your problem is nothing compared to my problem. What you call a problem to you, no problem to me. What I call problem to me, not problem to you. That our God does things. You know, we don't understand the ways of God. And I said it. I say, I believe God is a healer. Even when I pray for somebody, he dies. It's not my problem. I never heal anybody. I will never claim to be a healer of anyone. I have no, I have no qualification to heal anyone. It's God's business and God's job. It's got nothing to do with me. Somebody say, hallelujah. It's got nothing to do with me. My sister went to be with the Lord last year. And they called me sick. Let's pray. I pray and he died. She died. What must I do? It's not me. It's God. That will change the message, no. I cannot change the message for one situation. God is a healer. He gives life. He raises the dead, bottom and finish. When I die, God is still a healer. It's not God because of what he does. It's God because of who he is. Do we understand God? Why our worship is like a, a car? Forward gears. Reverse gears. Why? Because we don't know God. The man who knew God is here. I'm telling you, you cannot worship what you don't know. Jesus said to them in the book of John chapter 4 verse 23, he said to Samaritan woman, the time has come. The true worshipers, they shall worship the Father in the truth and in the spirit. She argued with Jesus. He said, we go to the mountain and say, you worship what you don't know. You need to know him for you to worship him. Job tore his clothes. He removed his status. He removed his pride, his ego. He went to worship. A rich man went on the ground to worship. Point number one, worship God. Save God, my brother. Point number two, step toward your breakthrough. 
For those taking note, you will write later. He said this. He said, I came naked from my mother's womb. And I will be naked when I leave. The Lord gave me what I had. And the Lord had taken it away. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Now verse number, 20, verse number 22. He says, In all this, Job did not sin. Why when we are in trouble, we begin to sin? Point number two for you to get out of breakthrough. Stay away from sin. I thought you were going to say amen. Stay away from sin. You know, the time of challenge, the devil will tempt you more. There will be so many suggestions. Let's go to the mountain, God is there. Let's go to the bush, God is there. Let's go to this place, God is there. To the point that you begin even to live in fraud and corruption. The Bible says a thief that steals to satisfy his anger when he's caught is not innocent. Number one, worship. Number two, stay away from sin. Step number three. He did not blame God. Hallelujah. Number four, I'll keep for you to come next Sunday. If I give you, you won't come. Number three, he did not blame God. Who are you blaming for what you are going through? Who are you blaming? Spirit of blame is a very dangerous spirit. Spirit of blame will bring you to the spirit of regret. Spirit of regret will bring you to the depression. Even commit suicide. Who are you blaming? In all this calamity, Papa Kumalo, Job never blamed God. Never blame God. Can you be on our feet? Who are you blaming? Small tinkling in your body, in your situation. You blame your auntie, you blame everybody. You will blame God. You know how do we blame God? God does not hear my prayers. I've been talking to you, God, you don't listen. Three steps. Step number four, I'll give you next week, then I'll show you the God we are singing, the God of restoration, who say the time of pain, the time of trouble, the time of darkness, this time which is a A, it is a Z. It has a beginning, it has an end. Only Jehovah, he lives forever. He called himself, I am the Alpha and Omega. Not as we named him, he named himself. Go and read about the names of God in the Bible. Are we reading the Bible? Alpha and Omega, nobody gave him himself. Jehovah Jireh was given to him. But Alpha and Omega come from himself. He said, I am. I hold the end. I hold the beginning and hold the end. What is robbing your worship? Is it trouble? Is it tribulation? Is it problems? And I want you to pray. Say, God, I come to understand. I may be in trouble. I may be in challenges. That is not the end. It's not the end. That's not the fate of my life. The Bible tells you and me, though I walk through, I walk through. It's a shadow. You know, I like expect a shadow is not a permanent thing. The shadow changes the position based upon the light. When you look to Jesus with the light in front of you, the shadow go at your past. It means your histories. Your problem shall be the history. But when you turn away, you put the light behind you, the shadow will be in your future. And many of us, when we have trouble, we turn away from Jesus. We give Jesus our back. The light is shining in your past, and all your tomorrow is covered with the shadow of disease and sickness and everything. My brother, only one step is needed. Just make a U-turn. We look to Jesus. The light will shine upon you. The shadow that was in front of you, it shall be the story of yesterday. They shall say, this woman had an issue of 12 years blood. Now she's healed. This man has 38 years of sickness. Now he's walking. Am I preaching to somebody? When you turn to Jesus, lift your voice and begin to pray. Say, Lord, 
you are the only one for the help of men the help of men is useless I turn to you though I walk through the challenges of life the trouble of life the pain in my body the disease in my body but when I look at you let your light shine let your light shine let your light shine give me the way out of this trouble give me the way out of these challenges lift your voice and pray lift your voice and pray oh lord almighty the steps oh lord out of my challenges worship staying away from sin lord almighty and not blaming you and not blaming you and not blaming you not blaming you lift your voice and pray There's nothing that you cannot do. Begin to see the great God. This is the problem that you call, I have a big problem. Nothing that the Lord cannot do. I trust in you. Can somebody trust the Lord once again? Peter worked the whole night to catch fish. And next morning he had nothing in his, in his net. But at the word of the Lord came. Peter trusted in him. He trusted God. Oh Lord my God, can we sing together?
one mountain that you cannot move. No sickness that you cannot heal. No trouble that you cannot solve. We trust you, Lord. Give the Lord a round of applause.